Welcome to Mac Helpers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add graphs and charts into your presentation. So go ahead and open up Keynote. Go ahead and open up a presentation that you want to use. And as this loads up, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and add a new slide real quick. Delete that out of there. So we got a full slide to work with. Now to add a slide, just like anything else, when you add, need to add something, click the plus sign. And I've already got uh, the bar graph is where your graphs and charts are going to be. So you first you start off with three different options. You got your 2D, 3D, and interactive. Interactive works great on Kino. I don't really know. It's it's hard to use on uh, like on on um, on numbers because. Usually, because you with a, with a keynote, you're actually doing a presentation. Whereas, if you're using an interactive graph on a spreadsheet on numbers, you it, has, it prints the slide the interactiveness on individual slides. So let's just go ahead and click 2D. And you could, what's cool is you can change these no matter what. You don't have to redo an entire chart or graph just because you selected a specific item. So let's go ahead and click this one. So it gives you your basic thing. To adjust the sizes, just like as always, you click on um, the, one of the circles. Whether it be um, in the middle, we'll change it up and down. On the side, we'll make it uh, change the width. And then in the corner, we'll make it, um, we'll move it, um, the whole graph in itself. But you can really move it around to fit exactly where you want it. So let's just say right there looks good. Now, to um, change the style of it, you click the paintbrush, just like always. Now, it gives you four different options. So, you got your chart. You can switch it from 2D to 3D. Or, you can go under chart, chart options. You could turn on a chart title. See how that popped up right there as a title to edit that. Just double tap on it. New graph. Click done. Go back to the paintbrush tool, the details brush. And go to chart options again. You could turn on a legend. See how it popped up on there as the region, region two, region one, and region two. Change that. Oh, you got to make sure it's selected. Click back on that. Go back to chart options. Let's turn that off. You could turn a border on. See how that border pops up behind there. You could change the text style. Let's do one that looks. Oh, let's see that one. You can change. Really see. Let's just leave it on Futura. You can increase the size of it. You could turn where the value labels are. So right now they're off, but when you click top, middle, bottom, or outside of it, it gives you a couple different options. So let's leave it a middle. And number format, you can change this to add decimal points. You can add prefixes, suffixes, separators. Uh, that's, I mean, it's, it really it's not necessary on this data exactly. So I'm not going to change anything there. And then you could also go into chart options and change. These are all the different options you have. So you can go to 2D pie chart, 2D area. Look how that one looks. Make that a little bit bigger. You can go back to, you can actually switch it to a 3D, or you can change it to interactive. So let's go back here. And now let's click on, let's leave it on this. I'll move this over here so we can see a little bit better. And let's go to X axis. So this is where it's, you can see, you can turn those labels off where it's got the months. You can turn them to change the angle of how they're presented. And you really just, you kind of just play around with it to sell you, to see where, how you like it. Now you've made your grid lines. See how it adds those grid lines behind it, those vertical. Major tick marks kind of just shows you a little bit. You can barely see them there, but see how it, right in between like April, May, June, and July, how they got those little dots that pop up. Those are the tick marks. It just kind of shows you where those each month's land. You could turn the x-axis name on, or you could turn the x the the lines off and on. Same goes for y-axis. You could turn those value labels on or off. See how it turn those off, turn those back on. You can change the normal for, number formats again. You could change the angles of how they're presented. I'll just leave it horizontal because I think that's the best on this specific example. Those are just kind of changes the scale in terms of how they look. And I'll go back into that. And you can major steps. You can make it a little bit more in more detail. If you got, if you're, the reason you do this is if you have data that's only like let's say 10, 12, and 13. So you really want to be able to see the difference in there. But when a graph like this where it's got a changes from 50 to 100, that's when you don't need as many steps. And then you get your grid lines. 
you got your minor grid lines. Major tick marks, see how those popped up on the 33.3 and the 66.6. .6. Then you could also turn the x-axis name on, see how it added there over there in the corner, the value axis. You can turn those axis lines on. And then the last one is a range, and this is where you can move it back if you've got a lot of different data on your specific thing or you got pictures that you want to put on there. That's where you use the range, and then you can also click the lock. Go ahead and click unlock it again. And now let's go into, let's say, let's turn this into a 3D. I don't want to use that. I want to go back to the chart type. And let's say I want to do a 3D, 3D column. Okay, so now we got 3D values. And... To, if it's a 3D thing, it gives you this little squiggly 3D tool, so you can click on that and you can really adjust how the thing looks, whether you want to see, like, be able to see the top, and they're like, I think that looks pretty cool like that. Now you click back on the details brush, and you can change colors, make it like a wood grain. Yeah, the wood grain looks pretty cool. Now go back to chart options, and now it's going to be a little bit different here. You can turn the chart title off and on, you can move where it's at, so I'll click turn that off. Go, Make the fonts a little bit bigger. Label values, let's go middle. And let's change the depth so you can make this make this chart like really pop out of the screen. And then you can also change whether it's a rectangle or a cylinder. So there's a cylinder for you. And see, look, now I can make this a little bit bigger. And I don't really like that angle with the cylinder, so I, I think that looks pretty cool where you can kind of see the shadows in the background. And so that's kind of basically it for uh, manipulating tables. Actually, um, but I forgot one important step. So now, how, what do you do when you add a chart and you want to change the, the actual data that's in it? To do that, just tap it once, tap the table once, and then it brings up your little tools. So then you click Edit Data. And then it brings you in the whole page here. So this is where you can change. This is... 2013 let's say or let's do 2012 and this would be 2013 and you so then you can go through and actually change the data here if you click next with the arrow pointing to the next one it brings you there if you hit next with the little kind of drop down it's going to bring you down to that one and then the other thing with doing this is you can change there and you could plot rows as series or plot of columns and all it's going to do is change the data of where it's at so when I do that, and you click done, look how it's changed the graph. So now it's now it's 2012 and 2013 on the bottom there. And so you can change that again by going, or you can just click undo. Now back it's back to that. So it kind of really shows you how the different options there. Let's go and click back on edit data again. And let's go back to, oh, it's already did that. And then you can turn it to a full keyboard if you're adding text and and let's say you had a list of different like people's names or something like that that you had text instead of numbers but that's just a, a simple way to do it so that's that's the full gamut of changing and editing your um, tables now the last thing I want to show you with tables and graphs or I'm not, sorry graphs and charts is when you click here now let's show you how an interactive table works so I'm gonna just shrink this one up and let's just go ahead and add I know that doesn't look that good um, but let's go ahead and add a new interactive chart so let's do it with these plots with the circles here and shrink this down actually let's just delete this guy out of there well we'll just make it small and now let's manipulate how this one works so what I was talking about earlier in the video was how interactive charts really work well when you've got a bunch of different data so here I'm just using the same kind of expressions that it did before and so when you click these icons down here, it's going to plot over the entire month span. So you can really kind of show you what's going on in terms of how the, how the months work, or not months, but how your data represents. So you can really plot it along instead of just having your data sit there. You can go into much detail and add in talking about specifically on this example each month. So that's how an interactive chart works. And just like before, you can go through and change the styles change the chart options, turning legends on and off, turning borders on, interactive charts. You can put the buttons below, or buttons only, or slider and buttons, or you can put it above or below. Or for, that's for the data set name. And so that's, and then you can change the bubble options to a bubble diameter, bubble area, negative bubbles, if you've got uh, data that goes beyond the specific data points. So now that is truly a full 
representation of how to add and manipulate your graphs and charts in Keynote. If you have any questions, make sure to email us at info at yourmachelpers.com or go to our website, yourmachelpers.com, for more information. Thanks.